Veterans Memorial Building at 6 o'clock on 209 Surf Street, Morro Bay, California, January 16th, 2020. I'd like to establish a quorum and call this meeting to order, please. And we'll start with a moment of silence. Next on the agenda will be the Pledge of Allegiance. Commissioner Swain, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I don't know how it goes. Yeah. Again, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So next on the air, our agenda is announcements and presentations. Does anybody have any announcements? Gentlemen? Shall yeah. I? Okay. Shall we do the report now? No. no. Later. The Morro Bay. Yeah. Morro Bay Active Adults. You can. Or, well, that's we? the next on the That's our next agenda. Oh, that's the next yeah. agenda. Okay. Well, I have one announcement I'd like yeah. to make. This is, uh, I did it at the, team, at the council meeting the other day, but this is flu season coming on and it's set to be a record flu season. And so I went over with the council, there's a right way and a wrong way to wash your hands. So I'm going to bring it up again. Right way to wash your hands before you get the water. You rub your hands together, front and back, 15 to 20 seconds. That breaks the skin loose and gets the germs loose. Then you need to wash your hands. It cleans them really good. So. An extra way to be cautious for the flu season, there's already been one death in the San Luis Obispo for it, so be careful and prevent yourself from getting flu. Thank you. So we put the soap on and rub for No. No soap. No soap. Rub your hands. Ah, didn't know that. Dry, I did not know that. Loose. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Good hmm. to know. Yeah, very good. I've got an announcement. Uh, this Saturday at Del Mar Park, we have the dot tournament for pickleball. And basically what the dot is, is everybody gets dressed up and uh, put dots all over yourself. And it's a fun tournament. And uh, as a matter of fact, it's filled up. We have the 48 players. And so if you want to come out and have some fun and watch, you're all welcome. So hope to see you there. Thank you. And you, you do have classes for people that want to learn the sport, right? Yeah. 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 Actually, every, every Saturday morning, there's somebody there. We have a court set aside for beginners. And, okay. And then we actually, for the people that don't have paddles, there are paddles, and we supply the balls. And uh, they go through a beginner's class, and, you know, they learn some fundamentals, and hopefully they learn how to keep the score. But it's, it's not that <laughs> bad. But, but they, you know, and it's growing. It's and everybody's welcome. So come on down, folks. Come on out. Very okay. good. Very good. Do you have anything? Nope. No, it's a bird festival. I've been seeing a lot of birders around. I myself like birds. I maintain a bird bath and some bird feeders. And so that's always a good fun event. A lot of nice people, those bird people. So, And there's several events. I think here at the, on Saturday here at the Veterans Hall, there's Meet the Raptors. Um, and of course, if you go to our website, or the city website, you can see all the wonderful things going on in Morro Bay. So please come and participate. We'd love having you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Commissioner Sorge. Okay. Uh, as far as uh, the meetings at the uh, Morro Bay Active Adults, um, one thing that was very, very successful in 2019 was our trips. Uh, and they go to many different locations, uh, venues. Um, and the lady that runs that, she does a great job. And uh, it's getting busier. So the trips are very, very successful. The next is Bingo. Uh, the lady that took over Bingo, I mean, this lady is a spitfire. I mean, she's a firecracker. She's got Bingo going. Uh, they can't put any more people in the room. And somebody came to her and said, gee, how about if we do it 
twice a month? And she goes, no. Because, <laughs> I mean, they're having like 90 people, 93 people show up. And so it's, and then so that people would know that um, the funds that accumulate from bingo are used to support different programs, charities, some of the um, um, aspects to help out some of the schools. Uh, so it's definitely a, a great program to have. I, there for a while we didn't have anybody to run it and she took over and she organized it to absolute perfection. So that's going real well. Um, other, other aspects of the Morro Bay Active Adults, I mean, they do everything. People should be aware. They should come by to the center. Uh, I mean, they have art classes. They have yoga. They have just all types of activities going on every day out there almost. So if you're interested in being active, get down to the senior center. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Any, any questions? Besides pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, well, Commissioner Shorts. Um, our next agenda item is the public comment period. And Mr. Chairman, if I could jump in on you really quick. I wanted to follow up with a couple of comments regarding the, the senior citizens as well as we've got some announcements here. I'm sorry. That's thank okay. you very much. Yes. Uh, just to piggyback uh, on what uh, Commissioner Sorch was uh, was mentioning there in regards to our uh, Morro Bay Seniors uh, Incorporated, they uh, they just did their um, annual election, and the uh, I'll announce the uh, new board members, and these are effective January one. Uh, Bev Shalwitz is the president. Larry Rosen is our first vice president. Mary Lou Irvin Woodkey, second vice president. Donna Shaw, treasurer. Sandra Santione, Santione, I hope I did that right, <clears throat> pardon me, Secretary. Meredith Bates, who does the trips, is our director number one. Rich Robb, uh, who represents uh, Pickleball, is uh, director number two. Carol Truesdale, Truesdale, director number three. And Louise Topper, director number four. Again, effective January 1. And it's the first time in a few years that, that we've had a full, uh, full board with the with the seniors so it's uh, it's great to have everybody on board and uh, and we're looking to do some great things this year I, I believe last meeting I spoke to the the numbers that we're up, up to uh, with uh, with current well um, I think Bev gave that report as far as new members new members I think we added another awesome. 270 last year alone and we're up to over 800 about 830 they say um, which is um, Quite a significant increase from uh, about five years ago when we were hovering around 300. So uh, it, there's a lot of action going on, a lot of great activities. Um, with that, I wanted to move into announcements, and I'll pass it down to Elk uh, if she has anything. Kurt, uh, one other thing. Um, <clears throat> through the website and the activity there, um, we're starting to reach more and more seniors, and uh, which is really part of why people are coming in. So besides word of mouth, yeah, but we're, in it, we're, we're reaching out and um, with, with what Bev has been doing and with the whole group now, I think we're probably gonna increase. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that this year we could increase easily by 100 people. Mm. So it's, I think the senior center's gonna be inundated with people. <laughs> Where are you gonna put them all? You know, we'll some of the space. classes. Yeah. So, but that's great. That's mm -hmm. great public activity. Mm -hmm. Very good. So a couple quick announcements. We've got some slides up on the screen there uh, just to, to show our winter 2020 aquatic schedule running from January 1 to March 31st. Um, at this time, we've got the January, well, the, the closure, the only closure was January 1. However, those are subject, subject to change um, dependent on uh, the schools, um, their, their programs and, and class activities. So uh, we do our best to, to keep our web, uh, website updated and, and staff informed in the office as to any changes with the, uh, with the pool program. The next slide. Did I do that? Look at that. Quilt fever with Becky Rogers. 
come on down, get your quilting on. Uh, Becky started up a few more classes um, this year, and you see her out there Wednesdays, and then she's got a Saturday sprinkled in there as well. Uh, so if you're into quilting, come on down. Uh, Zumba Fitness with Carmen. Thank you. There she is. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 7. It's a real popular class, and Carmen is looking at adding another uh, evening uh, due to the popularity. And I believe she's looking at a Wednesday or a Friday. Wednesdays, possible Wednesday. So stay tuned. If you've got your dogs, bring them out for a little dog training at Tidelands Park. And Irina, who, who comes around a couple times a year and does these trainings uh, with us, uh, has, has great classes on good manners, leash manners, and come when called. And I'm talking about the dogs. Okay. Stay tuned for our, uh, our 55 plus health and wellness fair. We gotta add a little humor in guys, right? Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, 55 plus health and wellness fair. This is our annual event and this takes place Saturday, January 25th, uh, starting at nine o'clock, running nine to noon. Uh, door prize of 200 bucks. So if you attend, you've got a chance of winning that. Uh, but there's fantastic uh, uh, folks that are joining us as far as businesses, uh, uh, information, uh, really ranging from nutrition to safety products, uh, chiropractor, um, and so on. So it's a, it's a great event, well attended. typically. Uh, I think last year we saw you know, well over 200 people, and we hope to see at least that this year. So come on out if you haven't been before, or if you have, because I know Brady Locke, our seniors, uh, uh, coordinator is uh, it, it tries to add something new and different uh, each year. Look at that. And along the lines of senior activities, these are our uh, Cuesta Emeritus uh, classes, and these are free classes provided by Cuesta College. These start up uh, January 25. Also, wait, no, you register January 25 at our event, but they start up uh, right around that same time. So Brady has done a little negotiation with uh, Cuesta College, and though you'll see some of the classes start on the 21st or 22nd, we are doing registration on the 25th to gather more folks at that time too. So, uh, so he's worked out a deal with Cuesta College, so, so there's no issues with uh, having to be registered or coming in late in registering. Um, what's we got, two, four, six, eight, eight or nine classes. Uh, we are uh, the biggest, uh, facility and, and town in the county that uh, offers up these classes. It's the most attended here. So it's a real popular program and it's, a, it's tough to find parking during those times at the community center. So come on out, take a class. Also, Estero Bay softball registration is now open. Uh, we're looking for girls ages from five to 14. So uh, check it out on the website or come into our office to, uh, to get registered. Also, if you're looking to uh, sponsor a team, we're happy to accept your, your, your money. Dr. Bob. What? All right. See, so you don't have a business in town, so I don't know why I'm picking on you, Bob. But yeah, yeah. I'm feeling that, I'm feeling feisty. Also, registration will begin March 30th for a very popular Junior Moore Bay Junior Lifeguard program. This program uh, will sell out within 15 minutes. Uh, so if you're interested in getting your children out uh, in, into the Junior Lifeguard program this year, uh, be there March 30th. We open registration at 8.30. It's either online or in person. Uh, we've got uh, three different programs. Two are the regular junior guard programs, the session one and session two. And we also have a junior waterman program that's beginning a bit earlier, uh, June 8th. So registration for all those programs begins uh, March 30th. And we've set the date for our annual Brian Waterbury uh, Memorial Rock to Pier and Half Marathon Run. Registration this year begins May 4th. And that doesn't sell out that quick. We'll take, uh, you know, we usually get over well over a thousand folks for this event. Uh, so you've got plenty of time to register. We even register on site uh, the, the day of. And the date set is uh, July 25th, uh, 2020 this year. So looking forward to that exciting event, always exciting event. Last year was the 50th annual. We're at 51 now. 
and it's uh, one of the longest standing uh, running events in the county. And with that, I will send it back to you, sir, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. A lot going on. Yes. Our next agenda item is a public comment. I. Uh oh. Is this on? <laughs> Please right. uh, introduce yourself. <laughs> say your name. And so I'm Jeff Heller. I'm a new city council member. I was elected last November. And uh, recently we've assigned liaison relationships with the different council members to the different departments and so forth. John Heading talked to me, he said, Jeff, you know, you really need to lighten up. <laughs> and so I'm gonna assign you to the Rec and Park liaison. And I thought, John, you know, you're right. And I gotta tell you, I found something in the past year. I do get complaints from time to time about different departments. When the Rec department comes up, Absolutely, everybody loves it. What you're doing here is fantastic, and uh, you've got a great commission, apparently. And I may blow off the rest of my meetings, but I'm coming to this meeting, because you guys got it going on here. You really do, uh, in all seriousness. And uh, my wife wanted to tell you how much she enjoys the art classes. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll get off the couch and participate a little bit more myself. So thanks so much, and I'm happy to help. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Glad to have you as our liaison. That's super. And uh, I'm sure this commission will find some things for you to do for us. <laughs> Thank you and welcome. I forgot something. Oh, you have more? Yes. Yeah, we have some more. Mr. Yes. Carl, Michael. Pardon, pardon my interruption, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did neglect to do a verbal report uh, during the announcement period in regards to our bocce ball project. And if. Uh, if I could uh, go ahead and, and move forward with that. Yes, Thank sir. You. Uh, I just had a meeting today with, uh, with the group that's, uh, that's going to be heading out the project. Well, let me back that up. We're all familiar with the project, and we've been working on this for a couple of years. Um, basically, where it ended up was um, uh, we did not get any, any bids from uh, local contractors do that, that fell within the, the, the value that we placed on it and what we thought it would cost to construct the, the courts. So with that, we, we pulled the project, um, brought it back to the city manager's office, and then he's got uh, a group put together that includes the uh, El Moro Church folks. Uh, so we met today to discuss how we're gonna move forward with this project. Um, El Moro Church will be an integral part of what we're doing. The city still will head the project out. Um, mostly, the uh, city will deal with logistics, uh, rough, rough grading, drainage, and, and technical things of that nature. Uh, anything that involves uh, heavy equipment operating, the uh, city will take care of. Uh, and then the city, along with the church, will, will look to bring the, uh, the, the gr rough grade up to, uh, up to level for a, a finer grade in preparation for the, for the flat work. Uh, that's needed for the project uh, and then the church will will uh, go ahead and mobilize uh, their volunteers along with others too and that's what I wanted what I wanted to bring up here as well as um, we're looking for volunteers for this project most of the work will be done Saturdays they're they're anticipating um, but we're looking for your guys help if you'd like uh, also uh, more of a seniors I'm going to uh, uh, shoot something out to them uh, to see if we can get the, the, that group on board as they were uh, very involved with the uh, the initial concept of this project uh, and along with uh, more Van Bloom um, and anybody else again from the community who would like to assist so it's not going to be technical work it's going to be more uh, labor related uh, setting uh, all kinds of uh, of pavers down, um, you know, a little shovel work here and there, but I don't anticipate the project taking too long, you know, and, I, and it's kind of ironic I say that because it's taken two years for us to get here, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're looking to, to move forward in February, and we'll start that off on, on a Saturday, which has not been determined yet, uh, with a groundbreaking ceremony, which would involve uh, your commission, uh, as well as uh, members from or El Moro Church, um, our more Bay Seniors uh, Senior Center Incorporated or adults 55 plus um, City Council staff so anyone uh, so I'll send something out to you guys uh, when that is formalized but this is a little touch and go you know dependent on, on weather as well as uh, volunteer help you know how it's all going to happen so it's going to be a, 
um, really a, a big communication effort to keep everybody in this loop as, as this project unfolds and moves forward. Um, let's see, and with that, uh, that's about what I had right now. Okay. That's, if there's, that sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Yes. I I'm going to be there. All right. I'm going to help. Fantastic. I'm going to shovel. I'm gonna, I can work a shovel real well. I'm, Pavers, I'm, I'm great at that. I'm, I'm putting you down on number one on my email. Number one? Yes, sir. I'm number one? Yeah. All right. He's been on TV now, so he can't back down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you, had, you said it, it, we're going to start in February. Yes. And it sounds like a big project. And it's going to, you don't know how long it'll be, but can you give us an idea of what are we talking? Yeah, I'm not a contractor, uh, uh, so I hesitate to give you any, any dates because, again, like Bob said, I'm on, I'm on TV. And, and we're being recorded, so I'm not going to commit to any specific time or date. Um, I would be real thrilled if we were able to open this up sometime this summer. Oh, good. Well, okay. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. So I know they're hesitant right now, especially as we were meeting, the rain was coming down pretty hard. You know, we don't want to do a rough grade and then have it sit there and look like a swimming pool for a while and then have to go back and regrade. So, again, it's weather dependent and volunteer dependent. Um, but we are looking forward uh, to, to starting in February. Great. So, yeah. okay. Very good. May I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, is there any uh, news on the Coleman Park project? Because some people have asked me, you know, that turns out to be a very, very popular park. Yes. Um, I'll go ahead and, and give a verbal report. I think we're item Oh, that's C. on here? Okay, great. Yeah, we're Thank C you. C7, the last item is done. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, um, <clears throat> myself, today I went in and met with uh, Herb Edwards with public works, civil engineer, about bocce ball. Had a great meeting. Uh, everything looks like it's just gonna move right along. Um, a, a big thing, of course, and Kurt was at the meeting, was the idea of, of the church and the labor that they can do. And that, according to him, that, was, that, that would be a big part of what's, what's gonna carry this through. So, it, um, I'm, I came out of the meeting, I, I felt really, really, Good. So, just thought I'd let you know. Good. Nice. Because yeah, I'd like to apologize to the public. We didn't know that a bocce ball cart could be so involved, but it turns out it is. So when we do it. We're going to do it right. So thank you for your patience on this subject. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back to you. Okay. Thank you. So now uh, we will move to item C, business items. We have seven. Excuse me. The consent calendar. Um. I jumped ahead of myself. We have three items in the consent calendar. Would someone like to move to make a motion to approve the items? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve Is items A1 through A3. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we accept that for file. I'll second that. I'll second it. Okay, I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nobody opposes. We'll move on. Our next item are their business items. We'll look at these one at a time. C1, program evaluation. Good evening, commissioners. I have a couple of reports to give you guys, all in some fun holiday stuff we just finished up. Um, my first one will be our holiday tree lighting. This year's 2019 annual holiday tree lighting was held December 6th, which was the Friday of Lighted Boat Parade. Um, we hosted the community event on Friday evening so that it allowed for com community to participate in all of the events that happened that weekend. Um, there are approximately 200 participants at this year's event. We had a couple performances, one from the Children of Morro Bay Kids Club Children's Center and one from the dancers from Desert Coast Dance Group. Um, I, we want to give a big thank you to Sean Ellis of Coastal Tree Experts for his assistance with hanging the lights in the rain as well. <laughs> Um, and also, this total event had an expense cost of $397.44. Um, the major cost was due to purchasing new lights and extra lights for our tree to be well lit this season. Um, other costs were low due to being, we host the event during typical recreation staffed work hours, so that um, cost doesn't impact us on, um, for staff cost. 
We also accumulated some donations, such as our active adults group donated cookies for us to give out, um, and we also gave out apple cider and coffee. Um, we also want to do a big thank you to our councilman, Davis, for emceeing our event, as well as the Morro Bay Fire Department for acting as Santa's land sleigh, and of course, Mr. and Mrs. Claus for visiting us all the way from the North Pole. So we look forward to next year's event. Any questions or comments? No, I think it's a good event, even though it's not a money maker per se. I think it's a great event for the community to get together, get, get kick off the holidays, get them all excited, especially the kids. This is maybe one of the best ones for the kids to come out there. And I agree. I know Santa sits and reads a little book, and they all come up there and they go crazy, and it's really a great event. So yeah. I say keep it up. Thank, Thank you. Well, it used to be in City Park. Very good. Right. It's still uh, at City Park, correct? It still is, yes. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, moving on. Moving on to C2. To holiday hangouts. Um, Recreation Services held holiday hangouts for both fall and winter holidays um, during this, for the school year. Fall holiday hangouts were held the Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving break, and the winter holiday hangouts were held Mondays and Fridays of the winter break. We adjusted days depending on the, the actual holidays and when parents were going to be gone. All holiday hangouts were held at Del Mar Elementary at our kids club classroom. Staff provided full daycare enrichment for children in grades transitional kindergarten through sixth grade. The day camp featured many exciting activities and special events that stuck to the holiday themes. Um, this was our first year doing it, but after surveying parents, they um, requested care for the holiday breaks because they still have to work, even though their kids have the time off. Um, we had a healthy participation of 20 kids per day, which was wow. I, I felt was really helpful. Um, the total expenses were $2,935.49, with 95% of that being staff, but I am very thankful that they're willing to give up their vacation time to come out and work for us and offer care. Um, we brought in $4,375 in revenue. So it was very successful. Um, and I believe next year we will offer it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because of how the holiday will fall. So I think that will be um, a larger uh, participation. We will also offer another one at spring break time too. Any Great. questions or comments on that one? Well, I personally think it's a wonderful program, especially for, for people with children. Um, seeing as how we did so well with it, could we uh, make it uh, more, uh, less cost less since we seem to be doing well financially? With it? Is that an option? Or to use, say, half of the profit to allow uh, people that wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it to attend? Yeah, we definitely uh, could. Um, we, a lot of our families use subsidized cares already, okay. so they're willing to pay that amount because we are we aren't the highest in um, child care. We really do stay in the margin of everyone. So whenever I come up with prices, six. I make sure that I'm using whatever everyone else is charging. Um, we haven't had too many families complain about the cost. I did offer if you signed up for more days, it was a much cheaper price as well. Okay, because so. yeah, it's kindergarten through six. That's a great time for kids to get together and, and make friends and uh, get together and make friends. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But yeah, we will definitely consider that for the next time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sounds okay. great. Okay, my last yeah. one. Um, this year we held our second annual Breakfast with Santa event. This year we on, only sold 28 tickets. The attendance was low, but we were also um, on the same day as Los Osos Parade and a couple other events, so I think that just impacted our amount of people that we could get. Um, we added, a, as a request from other participants, we added more activities. So we had a gingerbread house making. We um, had an elf station where they made crafts and, and got to get um, make presents for their families. Um, we also had face painting and music and crafts. Um, so it, that all that part was really um, a great addition, we think. We did spend, we had to spend a little bit more, obviously, to bring those activities, um, but we were able to use any of our extra food that was made that wasn't used or craft stuff. We were able to give it to Kids Club and they used it that next week. So 
we reused, I guess, and recycled it. Um, I think we're going to give it a try again next year. Families love the event. It just is hard to kind of pick a date that works for everyone. So we'll look into dates um, that hopefully are more open. Any questions or comments? How f when do you start planning that? That event? That event. Um, I'd say probably in November, October, okay. November. Yeah. So right after Halloween. Just says, and you, you mentioned it, uh, is to see calendar events that are going on somewhere else so that you can circumvent your event yeah, in regards definitely. to those things. And yeah. that, that, could, that could help. And um, what about advertising? Um, we do advertisement through our Facebook. We do it through um, flyers around town. And then we also send out emails, constant emails, to our families who participate in our events, which hits Cayucas, Morbe, and Los Osos. So anyone who does basketball, softball, soccer, kids club, kids camp, um, dance classes, any of those, we make sure that we get it out to all of them. OK. okay. Uh, just, as, uh, just as a thought, um, you could use the uh, senior website, too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that can reach a lot of people, you know, grandparents, right on down the line. Yeah, yeah. bring your grandkids in. You know? Yeah, that's and, a great idea. You know, so, I mean, they're there, you know, and they're, it's not going to cost you anything, so. Yeah, you right. know, So, okay. Yeah, thank you, yeah, Scott. Very good. Thank you. I'd like to think also that uh, I think it's a great event, and it's like any business, you start a new business, the first year or two, you're not expected to make any money, or if you break even, you're doing darn good. And since this is, what, our second year, correct? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just going to keep growing from word of mouth, and the extra activities you got, I think it's even going to make the word of mouth spread a little bit more. And so I, I think try it a few more years, and I think it'll turn into a real, you know, break even at least, and that's what we want is to break even, so yeah. I mean, keep it up. I agree. We, um, we had a couple families all the way from Five Cities area who typically traveled to um, Solving for this event, and instead they came to ours. So oh, I great. thought that was really great. KSBY was also out there. Oh, um, so I think yeah. that will help kind of encourage other people to know that we're having these, this event, and they can come out tomorrow Bay. Yeah. Sure. Maybe we could call KSBY a couple weeks ahead of time. <laughs> Because they, yeah. they love that stuff. I mean, they'll come out and do an interview with you or something and have it all say what's going on. So that's yeah, great. yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. So in, in regards, Kurt, would Brady Locke be a good liaison person to, because he goes to our MBA meetings, to bring that up? Yes, he can do that. Uh, we also can place a, a, a small little ad in the newsletter, too, to, to right. get the word out. Yeah, okay. Very good. Or you could be that guy, too. Hey, what do you know? Out for us. We, we can do that. All right. We do want to thank the active adults because they volunteered um, as servers for the event, and they are always very helpful. So we appreciate them. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Mm. Next on the item is C4. Soccer. soccer. Youth soccer. Bear with me here. I guess it's me from here on out. <laughs> Boy. All right. Stereo Bay Youth Soccer this year, 2019. I'm uh, going ahead and give you the verbal on Karen Sweeney, our Recreation Supervisor of Sports, uh, her report here. Uh, basically, we this program runs from, uh, from mid-August through uh, early November. This year we had 203 uh, children uh, ages from 4 to 14 participating. Uh, we brought in close to $28,000 in registration fees and, and expenses were right around the same. So we just about broke even with this program uh, at a 99% cost recovery. Um, some of the struggles that we have are, are still are, are getting uh, youth coaches for our programs uh, as well as um, getting the coaches to participate with uh, trainings that are required from our uh, greater associations that we're involved with. So um, we look at sportsmanship, um, concussion, things of that nature, um, but to get uh, these volunteers to, to comply at times can be difficult, so we're looking at other creative ways to, to try to get them involved. 
Um, that's just a brief overview of, of Karen's report. If you have questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them. I just have one. They, they do not allow headbutting in that division, correct? Um, heading you know, in soccer ball. Heading. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're correct, yes. Yeah. They, they do in the older ages. Right. But, and I don't know offhand wh where we start and stop I think that. it's 12, isn't it? 12 years old? Uh, I I'd buy that. Sounds about right. Hmm. They found it does a lot of neck injuries. That's why. And, and it, you know, bounces around the noggin there a little too much, you know, so, yeah. so it's a brain impact. So, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Kurt. Does the high school have any work experience classes? Because perhaps they could get credited for being coaches as I'm a sure, work experience. I'm sure they have work experience, yes. And that's a, it's a great idea. Yeah, for that and lifeguards, because I know that's a, that's a tough one, too. Yeah, we have something that we're, uh, that we're working on with the high school right now in regards to uh, lifeguards and lifeguard training. Great. Um, but I don't want to let that cat out of the bag right now. Okay. We've got <laughs> competitors nearby. Yeah. Not you. Well, I know. No, there are other, other pools. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> we, I understand. Yeah, we compete with Cuesta College and City of San Luis Obispo for small. staff. Okay. And, and both who are, uh, are, who are short staffed at this time, having to close down and cancel a lot of their programs because of that. So we're very blessed right now. We've got a great staff. Uh, yes, you do. And they wear many hats, and we really appreciate yes. that. I was, I was going to step in. Maybe you could, I don't know if I caught you saying you reach out to Quest to have those people that major in sports, you know, uh, not sports per se play, but, you know, they mm -hmm. major in a lot of sport activities. And Cal Poly also, there are some sport majors over there. Mm -hmm. I might get some of them to get credit for outside activity. Yeah, I think we had one young lady from Cal Poly this year that was a, a soccer coach. So, but you are correct, and, I, and I'm certainly taking note of that and see if we can reach out to them as well. Thank you. Anything else on youth soccer? Good activity, I'll have it. Moving right along then to item, what am I, C5? Uh, the 2019 Fall Adult Softball Program. Uh, adult softball in this county has seen a, a, a heavy reduction over the last many, many years. I can remember in the 90s, we were very popular. Uh, here with, uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to say 20, 25 teams uh, playing throughout the week. And, and this fall, we were down to five co-ed teams only. Um, could not generate enough interest in the masters or the men's teams to, to warrant putting together a, a league for them. Um, so we went forward with the five co-ed teams at a, at a shortened uh, season of uh, six games uh, with the tournament ending. Uh, finishing up on uh, December 2nd. Um, we're, we can't get our heads around the reason behind this, and, and I know Karen's been meeting with other uh, cities who do uh, offer adult softball. Um, one thing we did learn is the city of Atascadero is canceling their program and moving forward with an adult uh, kickball program. Hmm. So taking a different twist, different use of the, of the fields, um, with that, though, we might very well see some of those teams that typically played in the Task Darrow coming over to Morro Bay and playing here, so we could very well see an increase. Uh, so this, uh, this program uh, had a revenue of $1,625 uh, with the expense of 1926 with a cost recovery of 84%, which falls within the, our target uh, revenue goal. And that's all I have to say on her report here. Happy to try and answer questions if you have them. I don't have one per se on that, but uh, we're trying to, as senior softball, Thursday mornings pick up games. We're trying to get that going. So if anybody out there in TV land is interested in signing up for senior softball pick up games on Thursday mornings, it's kind of, you don't make a team, you come out there and then we draft more or less big pick up game. And it's, it's a lot of fun. The competition is not, you know, you don't have to hustle in, but you do your best you can and have fun. So I'd like to everybody sign up. We need, we're need we about halfway there. We have 28 or 29 people signed up. We're looking for at least 40. So I appreciate anybody who wants to go play a little softball, have a lot of fun. And there's kind of different rules there, which makes it so everybody can play. And it's really neat. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Bob. The aspect of... Uh, 
that tendon's dropping. That's just not here. That's in a lot of areas. And you know, you contemplate what is it, and I see a lot of the younger people, they do not want to dedicate themselves to one day a week. And so, unless they have a change of attitude in that regards, you know, it's going to have a, it's going to have its effect downstream. And in this case, I mean, I, I played softball for, gosh, from 24 until I was 65, and I'd still be playing if I didn't have shoulder replacement, you know. But uh, back then, I mean, when you look at those groups and even younger, but it was huge. Southern call. I used to play in the Southern California Softball Association every week, two-day tournaments all over. It's not like that anymore. So you got to look at other avenues and uh, go that way and test the waters. So... Go from okay. there. I had a couple of quick questions about Lila Kaiser Park. Um, a citizen approached me and said, you know, they were over there and the parking lot was still kind of bumpy. I know that's been an ongoing issue. And I think at one point we were talking about possibly revamping the grandstands, but I don't know. Am I dreaming? <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, maybe it was a long, long time ago. Okay. But yeah, the parking lot, I guess, because it's not really an improved lot, I guess, just needs to be graded once in a while. So, you know. But other Actually, than that, it's in pretty good shape, isn't it? Yes, I think I think so. And, and okay. just to speak to the parking lot, I know uh, uh, we did the the city was doing the uh, pavement project not long ago, it and yeah, and they parked uh, their their paving vehicles out there. But anytime they had uh, extra asphalt, they they go ahead and fill the holes out there. Oh, good. I'll go by there and check it out. So I'll know more the next meeting. Yeah, but I think that's been the, really what's going on out there as far as any parking lot improvements is. Any extra stuff will fill the holes. Okay. Otherwise, it's not on our capital improvement project list. Ah, every little bit helps. Yes, it does. Yeah. Actually, the parking lot is perfect. It's, oh, it is? It's coming in where the trees are tearing it up. Oh, okay. That's the part. But the parking lot, they did repave almost all of it, and it's good. Oh, okay. It's really good. Well, I'll go check it out for next meeting. Very Come on good. Tuesdays and play baseball with us. I can't. I <laughs> get <a> bad knee. <laughs> we all are out there. Yeah, okay. Let's move on to C6. Okay, thank you. I'm, 39 uh, and over dance club. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and review, uh, uh, hit, the, hit the high points here of uh, Brady Locke, our senior programs coordinator report. Um, this is the 39 plus dance club holiday party and dance. Uh, this was, uh, the intent of this was to, to get together the, uh, the Morro Bay Senior Center, uh, Senior Citizen Incorporated along with the 39 plus dance group. Um, really trying to stimulate more activity with this dance program. Um, these folks have been here in the city probably, uh, I'm gonna say over 20 years. Um, every Wednesday they were here in this building um, from 11 to two. They've got a live band that plays. Um, but what, was, what we saw was the price was becoming a little prohibitive and uh, membership was dropping off. Uh, so we went ahead and, and moved them up to the community center. Um, this way, uh, it, it gave them a little bit more uh, visibility to the, to the general public as well as those who, uh, who might be attending other programs at the, at the uh, community center or the senior center. Uh, this event specific, uh, so excuse me, so we're intending to keep their costs lower, so we moved their program underneath the auspices of the Morro Bay Senior Center, uh, Senior Citizens Incorporated. Um, that cut out uh, their annual insurance needs um, some facilities set up, uh, costs uh, were removed, uh, thus uh, dropping the uh, cost of the program down. Um, so what they're doing right now is, uh, is once a month they're offering um, this event at $5 a head as opposed to $10 a head uh, to, to just as an incentive to, to get some more folks out here. Um, just yesterday they had 45 people attend uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, which is one of the bigger numbers that typically hover around. Like I was saying before, it was maybe 20, 25 folks. Um, but since they moved to the community center, we saw right around 30. But again, yesterday it was uh, up to, to 45. So it was a great turnout. Um, 
and I think that this uh, this event uh, at the holiday dance party had something to do with that. Uh, we projected out for uh, and planned for about 75 folks and ended up with a bit over 100. Um, again, and, and unfortunately, uh, we held our general membership meeting, uh, the seniors' general membership meeting, prior to the dance. We had a little bit too much downtime in between, and many of those folks went home instead of uh, heading over to the community center side to. Uh, to get free dance lessons and then listen into the band. Uh, we did capture a few of our, of our uh, regular membership, but uh, um, I think the 39 plus uh, dance club has a, has a following. And many of those folks came from uh, really all over the county uh, to participate in this. Um, so we're looking to do that again annually and work with this, uh, with this group. But again, the intent really was to, to get that, uh, this dance club um, you know, out there and let folks know that, that this is happening uh, every week, uh, Wednesdays from 11 to 2, live band each time, and it's uh, it's 10 bucks a head to come on in. Um, and as as we uh, bolster up the attendance, you'll see the uh, the uh, entry fee drop down, and that's our intent: is try to get the the cost down as low as we can to cover uh, really just the the cost of the band. Um, this uh, event. Was uh, cost uh, see expenses of nine hundred and forty dollars. Uh, Four hundred of that was uh, absorbed by uh, thirty nine plus dance group. The remaining uh, five hundred and forty dollars was picked up by the city um, out of uh, recreation administrative budget. Um, and with that, uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Crazy idea to keep people there. Mm -hmm. Have a 50-50 drawing, mm -hmm. but you hold it after the general meeting. Uh, and so, and they're welcome to go into the dance side. Yeah. I'm sure that you're going to have some people stick around. Yes. But I, I mean, little things like that, you know, so you got to kind of throw out the little chum, you know. Right. So, what anyway. do I have to throw out there to get you to show up, Skip? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello. Oh well, I was gonna say I was gonna say come out and play pickleball, but you, I know you can't. <laughs> no. Yeah. We'll Some, get you to put your dancing shoes on instead of the pickleball shoes. Gee, yeah. Uh -huh. What do you know? Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, I have a pickleball in your dance. So this, yeah. you don't have to be partners. You just come out and meet people and dance, and that's, that's a good right. social meeting, right? Because yes. you get to dance. And yes, it is. And people how much was it again? Stand in line for you. Whatever. How much is the entry fee again? For this event, there was no fee. Oh, no fee. So it's free. Free food. So there's no excuse not to dance. That's right. Okay. <laughs> True. That's, that's, I like that. Now, when they do the free dance lessons, what music do they, is it different all the time? With the regular class, they'll, they'll do uh, lessons while the band is playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lana, and I don't know her last name, I apologize, uh, is a fantastic dancer, and she'll take you out there and show you show you the moves, uh, male or female, it doesn't matter. Charlie's danced with her, I've danced with her, uh, and she's fantastic, and, uh, and that's how that, that works. So at this particular event, there was no music playing, she was just kind of going through some of the moves with people. But she probably had, I want to say, six couples out there uh, getting some lessons. What is it, swing dancing, West Coast, East Coast, or oh, rock, gosh, or what it's, is it? It's big band music, so yeah. you tell me what kind of dancing swing. goes on. <laughs> okay. West yeah. Coast or East Coast, though, so there's two kinds. Well, they do, they do all sorts of different types of dances. I've seen that they have a little board that they hang up that says, "Here, this is the dance we're doing now, and it's like cha-cha or the trot or something. I, I don't know. I'm not a dancer. I need to get out there, too. Okay, thank um, you. But you're going to put it on your list Wednesday at 11? Sure. Though. Well, I don't want to show everybody up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll dust off my yeah, numbered it's, it's, feet and come on down. Go. It'd be interesting, yes. It's really, it's pretty fun. It's a good, a good group of people. How that often is that? Activity. Every Wednesday. Every, Every Wednesday, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. Yeah. You should write Jeez. it down. You warm me up for pickleball. Your hand. I don't know. I, Never forget I very it. seldom, believe it or not, unless I'm teaching, uh, I don't play pickleball on Wednesdays. Oh, to you. We'll yeah. see you next I week. gotta take a break yeah, sometime. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It, okay. Well, I, I gotta, this is really kind of cute, but in my lessons, one of the things I, and I use the idea of dance, mm -hmm. 
And so I ask everybody if they like to dance. And every, everybody says yes. And I said, well, what's really important when you're dancing with the rhythm of the music, you're always in step with your partner. And they look and, you know, and I'm just dragging them in. So I hold up the pickleball and I said, you see this? This is your new dance partner. Yeah, okay. And they get a kick out of it. Nice. Let's, let's move to C7. Are we going to announce these stuff at all? Um, should we do C7? Sure. Yes. Um, staff report? Yep. Prop 68? You if, you're, if you're ready, yeah. Yes. I don't know if I'm ready. Uh. I am. We, uh, as I had mentioned, we're, uh, we'll continue on with this um, Proposition 68 update. Uh, we'll do this uh, every meeting to keep you guys informed of what's going on. Um, at this time, uh, the city is working on uh, a project at Coleman Park to replace the restroom facility that, uh, that is down. Um, we are we're using funds from what the what the state calls uh, the per capita program, and that is an allocation of funds based on on our uh, population here. Uh, the minimum amount um, awarded will be two hundred thousand, and I was informed by the contacts at the state that that's about where we are. We're looking at the at the minimum, or it could possibly be a few thousand more. They don't know quite yet. It's all dependent on who applies. And, and the projects uh, that, that come in and the amount that they're supposed to pass out. So it's all in a big formula, but we're looking at anywhere from 200 uh, plus, you know, a little bit over that. Uh, because of um, our, our income levels here, uh, we are required to, to match 20% uh, of this, which is gonna be roughly $40,000 on up, um, depending again on what they award us. Uh, this, uh, so what, what we've decided to do, and I've, I've brought this to you, to you gentlemen, uh, our last meeting, uh, is we're, we're looking at a, a prefabricated restroom that's got an attached storage slash concession uh, area. Uh, and that is, again, prefab. So what we're trying to do here is use the funding from the state and, and a minimal, uh, mi minimum amount of uh, general fund dollars for this project. Um, so if, if we're able to capture the 200 uh, and then 40,000 uh, the city needs to come up with, that can be in, uh, in staff time, it can also be just our dollars or it could be volunteer costs or it can be uh, volunteerism or it could be um, other donations. So our latest conversation I had with our public works offices is let's look at this project in a couple of different phases. Um, because the cost of the restroom, restroom runs right around 160000 um, we decided it won't take too much more as far as uh, demolition of the facility, the uh, cost for the flat work that's going to be required for ADA compliance. Uh, all that combined will pretty much eat up uh, the $240,000 that we're, that we're working with. Um, so we decided, let's do this in phases. Let's just take a look at uh, uh, getting rid of the old restroom, dropping in the new one, getting the flat work done, and then seek other, um, other grant funds that will be available through the state. There's a number of different programs that I had uh, presented to, to you gentlemen um, a few months ago, um, a handful of these. And uh, since that time, I've been meeting with, um, with uh, playground companies uh, to see if we can get something out there uh, with their help where they will also give us discounts that will help us again with the, the grant applications and whatnot as matching funds. So uh, there's a number of different uh, things that come into play uh, when we're talking about the project like this and when it involves the grant funding. Um, but that's kind of where we're, we're sitting right now is, is our uh, application needs to get back to the state uh, by the end of this month and they'll then forward to us um, a contract outlining the, the, the funding commitment and then we'll sign and get that back to them by end of March and we can start moving forward with the project, which we already have as far as meetings and whatnot. <coughs> Um, meetings like this that we're talking about will also be included in the, in the matching funds. Um, and this meetings like this will also come into play as far as uh, points are concerned when it comes to a competitive grants. Um, so they look for community outreach, things of that nature um, that will help us to secure uh, additional funding in the future. 
Uh, so really, we're set with the, with the restroom. The, the design will still be, uh, needs to be selected. Uh, we're working with the Harbor Department and Public Works Office to, to select the, the most uh, attractive and uh, uh, facility that makes the most sense down there at that, at that location. Um, we have already have the uh, rough ideas of, of where to place the, the restroom, and we spoke about this a couple months ago. Um, Excuse me. Moving the moving the the restroom from its current location uh, further out west towards that parking lot that's adjacent to the basketball court, uh, thus opening up more space at the rest of the park um, for future uh, either a workout station um, or it could be a, you know more, uh, playground uh, elements, um, picnic tables, uh, benches, and things like that. Um, so. I want to make sure I got everything I wanted to talk about, and I hope I didn't ramble on too fast. Um, but happy to answer any questions that you might have about oh, this project. Kurt, what's the square footage of this facility? <laughs> of the restroom? Well, well, they're also talking about some type of a ancillary use too. But yeah, what's? I think mm, I didn't bring the plans with me. We were five hundred, maybe six hundred square feet. That sound right? Twenty by thirty. Twenty by thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Right in there. And it's got uh, it's two separate restrooms with uh, two stalls in each restroom, and then the other half of the building is going to be the storage slash concession area. And so, what was the total cost that you think it was going to be? The prefabricated uh, building is one hundred and sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. Six hundred square feet. Gosh, I should go into business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just kidding. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, I, I believe we do have a couple picnic benches and some swing sets down there. Yes. So, we could we could just utilize those for the time being and then further down the road. Because that would be a great little place for, you know, some more st uh, structure for children to play since it's got such a beautiful view. Yes. So, yeah. You're doing a fine job with that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It is going to be a really nice park, and that's one of the parks that really has kind of been a little bit neglected. Um, but the tourists, I mean, it's a very, very uh, strategically located park, and I'm sure when it's done, it's going to be a real feather in, in our cap. Yeah, and, and as we move along through this whole process, uh, you know, the restroom is one thing, but then it, when it gets to uh, in, including the the additional amenities uh, and, and exercise elements or, or playground stuff, I'm going to bring you gentlemen into the into the fold on that, and we'll talk about that at our next meeting, and right. you know, try and brainstorm okay. on some good elements that we could put out there. Um, and I'll bring recommendations forward uh, from our uh, the playground uh, consultant that I've been speaking to, um, who I'll see again um, at at our California Parks and Rec Society uh, annual conference in Long Beach. That's in in March, so I'll touch base there again and and try and grab uh, good information there and um, and bring that forward to you, gentlemen. Um, and then also, I think, um, to speak to uh, something we had talk talked about, um, oh gosh, it seems like a year ago, uh, with, uh, with Ann Reisner and Elaine LaLanne when they came to the, um, you know, that was a great presentation and great um, ideas. Unfortunately, what didn't come forward from those two ladies were, um, uh, were a specific design or any offer of funding. Uh, and so that's what I want to go back and see if we can't um, get some something more from them because I think it'd be a, it'd be a great thing to have uh, something to honor Jack Lane out there uh, at that location. Um, whether or not it's going to be uh, you know workout um, types of, uh, of equipment that that you know he would have embraced. Um, you know it's a different day now, but uh, uh, but it's still something to recognize him. I think is. Uh, uh, would be would be nice. So I'm looking at reaching out again to to those two ladies to see if we can move forward or something. That, that would be nice. Here, you know, one thought. You know, the the pirate ship over at Tidelands is very popular. Maybe we could look into some sort of a little boat and let the Coast Guard guys paint it up like a Coast Guard vessel. That'd be kind of cool. So oh, reverting back to my childhood, but I'm just thinking. You know, kids just love playing on, on boats near the ocean. It's great idea. Well, actually. Yeah. I'm a board member of the Maritime Museum, and we're getting a tugboat put out there for kids to play on. Oh, okay, great. Tugboats oh, are wow. good, too. Yeah, we can get that tree cut down. 
Oh. Where is it going at by the Maritime Museum building? It wants to be where the, the plans were for it to be where that big eucalyptus tree is, but uh, unfortunately that got accepted in the plan as being a tree, so we're trying to work on getting that out of there so we can make uh, that a kid's play area. We're uh, going to have a boat out there and some other things, not tying exhibits and all kinds of things. Oh, cool. That's awesome. That was great. Oh, I was going to bring up, a, I think that's a great idea. I was going to bring that up. We should incorporate Jack's little monument out there. Mm -hmm. And th they said they would pay for it, didn't they? You I know, thought I, that's what they, when I was talking to Mr. Reisner, Ron, and mm -hmm. all that, and they agreed they were going to pay to put it. Well, he was going to make something. Uh -huh. But uh, if I think they would put up a fair share to just put some kind of monument out there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I do vaguely recall that there was discussion about that, but it, nothing was set as far as. A design, or uh, was it a statue, or a plaque, or funding, things like that? So, I want to try and, and, and yeah. go back and talk to those guys. Well, they didn't like where we wanted to move it. That was part of the problem. Right. They wanted uh, it there where it was ADA non-compliance. So. That's right. It's, it, it was there was a plaque uh, in front of a tree that unfortunately died, and which was just what I think northwest of the um, the outtake, of, mm -hmm. or the, no, the intake building. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It separates that from the parking lot, that little. Yeah, thing. yeah. I, so I think they like, planted another one across from there. Oh, they did. Yeah, okay. yeah. But somebody you know. is this plaque back out? There? I, no, I haven't seen the plaque. Um, but I'd like to see something more than a plaque in the ground, you know? Yeah, like, so would a I. A little statue or something. Yeah. 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 Well, he has and, one out in front of his house. Maybe we could talk her into bringing it down. Does he really? Yeah, he has a statue. Yeah, a life-size statue of him in front of his house. <laughs> Oh, that needs to come on over. <laughs> and one other thing, too, about, about Coleman. When you talk to the um, Harbor folks, uh, see if they wouldn't, be, uh, 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 wouldn't mind having a couple barbecues down there. Because I know the barbecues are very uh, popular at Tidelands, too. Um, but, yeah, if we could. Thank you. The Harbor guys are cool with it because, you know, yes. it's kind of dangerous to have a barbecue, but it's also a wonderful thing to, to have. Right. <laughs> burning down our park. <laughs> Anything further? Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank That's you. That's all I have. Sounds great. Um, yeah, well, we, I see some, Mr. Sedaris, what do we have here? Uh, somebody left these up here. I don't know if they're for us, but they're probably for everybody. The uh, production by the C, if you check out their website, they've got several plays coming up. So... Uh, yeah, just something else to do. Get you out of the house. Get your circulation going. Very good. Very good. I was wondering, can I do a shameless plug for the Maritime Museum? <laughs> <laughs> January 30th. They're having a, uh, he's a captain of one of the Maersk ships that go all over the place, those big cargo ships. He's going to talk about his experiences of being attacked by pirates, his uh, experiences when he went around the Cape of Hope down in off Africa. He was... He's got to talk about that. And just his experiences of what it's like to haul, you know, $5 billion worth of cargo on a big old 400 some foot boat and all the trials and tribulations. And so it's going to be a great talk. So it's July, oh, I always say July, January 30th, Thursday, at the end of Morro Bay. 6, 6.30, I think it said. 6.30? Yes, $10 for a ticket. Okay. okay. Cheap Thank twice you. the price. Okay, very good. Future agenda items. Do we have any other agenda items to talk about? I would like to follow up one future agenda item. It goes along with what we're, we've been kicking around for a long time is that circuit training along the boardwalk. So I've been out there walking a lot lately, and I still want to pursue that. Well, that, that could be our, our monument to Jack Elanis. We said a couple of plaques saying, you know, stretch here how far it is between the, the beginning of the walkway and the rock and back and how it's about how, yeah, yeah so how healthy is to do that well i want to do it each there's already benches there at each right. bench you can do an exercise right and then you walk past the next one do an exercise you could i know i already have everybody should i have a plan okay you just gotta okay. do it okay thank you very good <laughs> mr chairman before we move on uh we need to to make a motion for the business items Oh, yes. File and accept. Should accept and file. Again, do we have a motion to accept and file the business items? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um.
So they're approved. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for the attendance and Here's our next meeting. All of our um, our next meeting, it says right here, is 6 p.m. Thursday, March 19th, right here at the Veterans Memorial Building, 209 Surf Street, Morro Bay, California. Everybody should attend. Thank you. We're adjourned. All right. Home.